Our beloved drones fly great not only because we have amazing hardware, but also because we have amazing software. Without the thousands of hours of development time that went into flight controller software like the Betaflight, no, your drone would not fly as well as it does right now. Half of that performance comes from the PID controller, yes, correct, but most probably the other half comes from the gyro filtering. Because our drones are flying vibrators without the proper gyro signal filtering, we would have a lot, a lot of problems. Even the quick look at the Betaflight filtering options show that there is a lot of happening. A lot of filters to enable, a lot of filters to disable, and a lot of settings that you can change. In this episode of the FPV University, let's take a look at the Betaflight filters. Let's take a look on how exactly the gyro signal is processed in the beta flight, through which filters the gyro signal comes from the gyro hardware before it's fed to the PID controller. Let's roll out the visual aid and let's start learning. This is the route that the gyro signal has to travel in the beta flight. From the moment of the acquisition from the gyro hardware to the moment when the gyro filter can be fed to the PID controller of the beta flight. Bear in mind, not all of the filters are enabled by default. Some, maybe even half by default is disabled, like for example, static notch one and the static notch two, but they can be enabled if you want to. It doesn't mean you should, but you can. Also, you do have to remember that while the filter removes the noise, every filter also increases the delay of the signal. And the process of correctly tuning the filters is the compromise between the amount of the filtering and the amount of delay introduced. The less filtering, the noisier signal means less delay, the more smoothened out less noisy signal means that most probably there is more delay. The delay causes bad things to happen because the PID controller is no longer reacting to the current state but the past state and extra delay might lead to going out of sync and huge oscillations. It's all about the compromise. You have to apply as much filtering as it smoothens out the gyro signal that there is no problems because of that, but not too much because the delay will grow and the flight performance will degrade too. The gyro processing begins with the decision. Is the gyro downsample filter enabled or not. This is driven quite counterintuitively by the setting gyro LPF static HZ. If this is zero, then this means that the simple gyro averaging filter will be used. If, however, it is set to any value besides zero, then the gyro static low pass filter 2 will be applied to basically get rid of any problems with the aliasing we might get. This section over here is happening with the same speed, with the same frequency as the gyro acquisition and independently from the filtering that is happening later. In the meantime, do me a favor, hit the like button and write in the comments on which kind of the videos from the FPV University series you would like to see next. So I know which kind of the video I should record next in this series. Thanks, it means a lot and it helps to grow the channel. After the downsampling and anti-aliasing is done, the gyro data is fed to the RPM filter. Bear in mind, RPM filter is the filter that is measuring the rotation speed of every single motors and applies the filter based on the rotation speed of the motors. The main motor noise frequency from the 
imbalance propellers, whatever, will be equal to the frequency of the motor, the rotation speed of the motor. Of course, to make that happen, the beta flight has to know how fast each of the motors is rotating. This can be done either by the ESC telemetry or bidirectional D shot. If you have either one of those enabled, then the RPM filter can work and can pretty effectively and pretty nicely remove the biggest source of the noise you have. The main frequency of each and every motor independently. Of course, if for any reason your ESCs are unable to report the rotation speed of every single motor, the RPM filter will be off. The next two filters are static notch 1 and notch 2. They are exactly like the name implies, the static notch filters that can be and have to be set by you to exact frequencies to get rid of the vibration peaks, the noise peaks in the frequency graph you might see in your gyro traces. By default, static notch 1 and static notch 2 are disabled by default and you should not enable them if you do not have a very, very, very good reason to do it. By the way, most probably, if your quad is not broken, not super damaged, does not have super strange resonant frequencies, leave those two off. If you ask me, they should be removed from the beta flight. Most probably nobody really uses them anymore. After both static notches were processed, Betaflight makes a decision. Is the dynamic LPF enabled? Yes or no? Dynamic LPF is the filter which cutoff frequency is driven by the throttle. The assumption is that if your throttle is low, then the noise frequency you will get in the gyro signal has the lower frequency than when your throttle is high and to nicely filter everything and keep the delay as low as possible, dynamic LPF filter is executed. Its cutoff frequency is defined by the throttle position and this allows to have even smoother signal while keeping the delay low. The dynamic LPF is on by default. If however you will set gyro LPF 1 then mean frequency to zero, the static LPF that you can set manually will be enabled instead. The last stage of the gyro filtering in the beta flight is the dynamic notch. Dynamic notch is enabled by default Yes, tuned by default for the 5 inch quads and what it does, it analyzes the gyro signal, searches for the most obvious frequencies in the gyro signal based on the FFT analysis, fast Fourier transformation of the gyro signal and applies the notches on the peak frequencies it has found in the gyro signal. This picks up everything that was left by anything else in the filtering, including for example some of the resonant frequencies the frame has to smoothen those out. Of course, it's not as precise as the RPM filter itself because of how we measure those frequencies that are still present in the gyro signal, but usually is precise enough and have low enough of the phase delay to improve the quality of the gyro signal considerably. Now, here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!